Hallelujah. Okay, so I will teach on royal priesthood for the time being, and um, I want you to just pay attention and follow. When you hear royal priesthood, what comes to mind? What comes to mind is the kingdom. The word royal speaks more about what a throne is. That correct? It speaks about dignity. It speaks about respect. It speaks about a name. It speaks about weight. Is that true? It speaks about dominion. Are we together? It speaks about authority. It speaks about influence. Is that true? But when you hear priesthood, what comes to your mind? Church. What comes to your mind? Religion. What comes to your mind? Spiritual engagement. What comes to your mind? Spiritual sacrifice. What comes to your mind? Prayer mood. What comes to your mind? Tongues. You see that? Actually, so I'll begin to teach now. Actually, according to scripture, royalty and priesthood should not be separated. Praise the Lord. Royalty and priesthood should not be separated. In fact, the reason why many have been born again in church, serving God in church premises, but have not been able to manifest the will of God for their lives, is because they don't know that the purpose of priesthood is not priesthood. Praise the Lord. Priesthood and dominion or priesthood and royalty stems from the person of God. God is actually the priest, the ultimate priest. Jesus became our eternal high priest. Are we together? But you see, what we need to come to understand in purpose gathering is that God is spirit. So let's start, you, you can take and as it comes you take the note now from creation God was king God did not become king when he created man praise the Lord in fact God did not become father when he created man because the fatherhood of God spans beyond God as the father of man are we together <laughs> others for example in national anthem, I like to begin with elementary things. So, you know, like Jesus teaches with the basic things so that you can understand. Now, are we together? Oh God of what? Creation. Actually, God is not just the God of creation. God is the Father of creation. What makes God the Father of creation? He is the source and the sustainer of creation. So, when we say royal priesthood what we are describing simply put is godhood is christianity if now pay attention one of the signs that a man's priesthood is faulty is that there is no royalty there because the goal of priesthood is not just to interact with god the ultimate goal of God for creating man according to scripture is actually not dominion. Uh, is not even priesthood because the ultimate goal of God for creating man is his glory. Please say with me the ultimate goal of God for creating man is his glory. Yes. So God created you and I, Genesis 1, 26 to 28. So maybe someone will be opening scripture so that um, we all are on the same page. I have a lot to share within the ambit of time that I have, but I must lay a proper foundation. So Genesis 1, 26 to 28. Then God said, Let us make man uh -huh, in our image. Wait now, please give me that passport there. That one. Now give me. Please come. I want to give an um, illustration. Please hold, open it now. Don't open everything. Just open this one. Show them. What is this? What is this? Is it a passport photograph or a passport? The real passport. What is this? 
Just, just. This is an international passport. Now, lift it up. They can't see. I'm black. They can't see. Now, do you realize that as far as Nigeria is concerned, this thing like this is representing me. If we get to the embassy now, they won't just say, okay, how tall are you? They will check. This is what they will either approve or disapprove. But when you go to your and say, ah, pastor, I rejoice, so they just gave me is these things they would, they would that not you. Is that true? Now, what God did is that in making man in his image, man should be, even though man does not look like God. Mm -mm. Because God is spirit and man has a physical casing. Is that true? God does not have a physical casing. But man is in the image of God and in the likeness of God in the sense that number one, the design of man within his spirit is to be the exact representation of God. Meaning that originally, before man fell, when man showed up, creation should respond to man as if it was responding to God. So, what happens is that God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. And the, the problem with mankind, the problem with humanity, thank you, the problem with humanity, the problem with many believers is not that we cannot have dominion. It's not that we cannot be mighty. The beginning of troubles, even in Nigeria, currently, is that the crisis that we are experiencing is not necessarily a political crisis. It's not an economic crisis. Dr. Masmuro called it identity crisis. So, the fall of man was not occasioned by rebellion. It was first occasioned by lack of understanding of the desire of God for making it. It was God that preached the sermon to him. Are we together? God told Adam that in the day that you eat of the fruit of this tree, you will surely die. Is that correct? And some people said Adam did not tell Eve. It's not true. Because when the serpent came to Eve, the serpent asked her, did God really say? What did Eve say? Eve said, God said. But the trouble is that there is an identity crisis that hinders you from walking in the reality of a royal priesthood. No child of God, in fact, no human being was created to be second class in any way. Because according to God and his word, the apex of creation is man, not the angels. Is that true? The one that has the affection of God, the affinity of God, is man. And that's why the psalmist said, what is man? That you are my, your mind is full of him. You are spirit. Yet you come, you come to relate with him as if he's the only one you created. Because even in the realm of the spirit, they know that it was dust that you took and you breathed upon him. Sir, what makes him better than the angels? Because as, as far as the scripture is concerned, angels excel in strength. So even said, no, there are some things that angels excel in more than men. One is that angels excel in strength. The Bible tells us. But, what you did for man was that you crowned him with glory and virtue. So, originally, the fall began when Adam forfeited his role as a priest. Because the function of a priest was to mediate between the spirit realm and the physical realm. Praise the Lord. The function of a priest was to mediate between the physical and the spiritual. If your priesthood ends in prayer points, you don't understand kingdom. You will never do royal priesthood with only prayer points. This is why, for example, I do not fault anybody 
who people say, ah, maybe Pastor Victor speaks in tongues a lot and his capital letter tongues, wherever we got that from. Now, you know, he speaks in capital letter tongues. What do we say? He's a man of prayer. A, listen, a believer that prays is not known by his prayers. A believer that prays is known by his dominion. The impact of your prayers want to see, not how you concoct it. Are we together? A praying man is not the one that prays with the old mic. You see, there's something about microphone. When you hold it, energized. Is that true? Forget. forget. If, if, if you are feeling sleepy, if, if I give you mic now, I say, Baba, oh yeah, flu. You that were not praying in house fellowship, you just say, Bashantaraka, Bashantaraka. Then, <laughs> are we together? Is it a lie? Then after, even after two hours, they want to call a mic. You are doing as if you didn't see the lady. The lady is already standing. He said, Madam. Then he said, Thank you, Lord. Then we will now sing this song. You will now sing off key. That's the sign that the spirit is. <laughs> are we together? Now, very quickly, you find out that, but when you drop the mic, how you know the person was praying in the flesh? It's just that when the person now drops the mic, he now goes to, to the wall and, and just poses like this. He said, ah, Okay, go and leave prayer again. Then he goes again. He's alive. Priesthood is not done to impress men. The assignment of a priest is not to impress men. It's, it's to impress a spirit. Praise the Lord. Let them have what? Dominion. Mommy, you sit down now. Thank you. Dominion is the goal. But you need to understand that dominion is actually a pathway to giving God glory. See, glory is in levels of your ordination as man is to be a priest and a king. You are not as a Christian, as a human being. It is because we have lost the original purpose of God. That's why we now have to now first repent and then now begin to find out what is the purpose of God. And then you hear things like, ah, the purpose of God for my life is to be a banker. No. The purpose of God for your life is that your life brings him glory. So, so your assignment placement, because we are going to talk about a lot of things in the evening. Your assignment and your placement are only platforms for you to do God's will in order for men to see your good works and then give God glory. Praise God. Ah. So, number one, I've established that the ultimate goal of God for creation is the glory of God. Number two, God for man is to glorify him. Number three, God is king eternally. Man is temporary, even though his spirit has an eternal dimension. God is spirit, but man is limited in his earthly sojourn. Meaning man does not have all the time in the world to do the will of God. we here. The first time the word priest will be mentioned in scripture was in Genesis 14. Turn with me. Genesis chapter 14, verse number 18. Abraham, the father of faith, and Melchizedek, the king of Salem. Do you remember? Are you there in your Bibles? What do you see? The battle of kings. Remember Abraham rescued Lot. You remember? Uh Now, Abraham was to return. Now, what I want to do is that by the Spirit, I see that there will be many of you here who need to be activated in the direction of your purpose and your ministry. Are we together? Because the goal of God for setting up the fivefold ministry of this is not to excite the saints. It's to equip the saints for the work of ministry. So, what you see is that Abraham came and you will be thinking that Abraham will just be dancing before Melchizedek. No. Abraham came to Melchizedek with tithes, with gifts, with the spoils. And Melchizedek offered him bread and wine. Right? And then he said, blessed be Abraham. 
possessor of heaven and the earth. So what you see is that he said, Blessed be Melchizedek. He called him priest of the most. Is that in your Bibles? Genesis 14, 18. What did he say? Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine. And he was what? The priest. Listen now. He was the priest of the most high God. But when countered him, what Abraham came to find out was that this priest actually didn't even need anything from him. That idea that giving is a business transaction is why your priesthood will not be effective. Giving, when I mean giving, I'm not even talking of giving to the poor because we have learned that if you give to the poor, you will have more money and all those things. Listen, giving is a Giving must be a product of revelation If you don't have revelation about giving You can give and be poor There are people who give and they are broke I've met people I've given before many times and I was broke I kept borrowing and giving And I was borrowing and I was giving There was a revelation that Abraham had Melchizedek gave him bread and wine And then he left Only for the, one of the kings to come to him and then the king said you know what uh, take the goods give me the people and Abraham said I've lifted up my hands to the most high I will not take a latex from you so that you will not go ahead and say I was the one that made Abraham rich you see what we are talking about is that listen it, the time will come and it has already come where your allegiance will be tested you need to be conscious that you are not just a Christian, a Churchian. You are a priest. Actually, in the kingdom, there are no priestess. This morning when I called, I said, hey, kingdom priestess. I laughed. I said, where did you, I, I, I corrected myself. I said, where did you get that one from? In the kingdom, there is no priestess. Everybody is a priest because in the spirit, it's not a male, not female. Uh, I mean, I mean, because in case you want to start your ministry, I want to say kingdom priestess. Some people like us now, they will have so best thing, take ten. There's no priestess. In fact, if you ask Google, if Google is wise, okay, Google cannot be wise because the program we don't know who program. Google will tell you that a priestess is one that you know helps you interface between the realm of the spirit and the physical realm, and is not of the Christian religion. Because in the Christian religion, we don't have priestess, we have priests. Revelation chapter 1 verse 6. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 6. I'm introducing my dimension of the teaching. Revelation chapter 1 and verse number 6. And now I want us to read it together if you do not mind. Thank you, my sister. Everybody together. If you are there, Revelation chapter 1 verse number 6. Are we there together? Are you ready? One, two, read. And has made. Wait. Hey, there's a way to read the Bible. Read it with, if you see emphatic stress, emphasize. If you see, if the Bible is quiet, be quiet. If the Bible shout, shout. How do you read Psalm 23 and you end it with, Amen. And then you are going like this. You didn't read it. When you get to that, yeah, you know that maybe David was a Yoruba guy. Because, yeah. <laughs> okay, but that's not <laughs> Now look at this. Let's read together. Revelation 1, 6. 1 to go. And has made us kings and priests to his God and Father to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Do you see that the making of God for the believer is that you are a priest and a king. Listen, there is no distinguishing. Uh, this one a priest. This one's a king. No, sir. You are a priest and you are a king. Because you don't have a different version of the Holy Ghost. It's the same Holy Ghost. Praise God. Christian basics, you know that when Jesus gave up the ghost. The curtain of the temple was turned from, into twain from top to bottom. Signifying that we now have access to God. Right? 
We have the Zadokite priest. We have the Levitical priest too. Right? The Aaronic operations. Eli and all that. You have all that. But you see, in the New Testament, because if I begin to tell you a lot about the Old Testament, I won't be able to teach what I teach. You need to know that your access to God, your access to God has three major pillars. Listen, if you are a Christian and these three things are not in your life, you cannot be a royal priest. You will just be doing church. Why are Christians not rising? Because they don't understand. This thing we are talking about, many don't understand it. They think that the goal of God in getting you saved is just to be saved. And then they just thank God I'm saved. Hallelujah. I'm saved every day. God is saying, oh God, this is not why. Salvation, redemption is a means to an end. When you born again and receive the life of God it was a means to an end you should do it saying I am saved you yourself should be a savior so when you receive Christ you see he says and has made us if he is trying to make up, does it mean that there is no making process you get there but I'm saying uh-uh. in reality in the spirit what he did was that he has made us to be kings and priest unto notice he didn't say unto creation are we here are we here if we are here say yes two times okay he made us kings and priests unto our God why because whether you like it or not whether you like it or not every human is actually a priest because the goal of spirits is entity and dominion. A spirit wants to find expression on the earth and the spirit knows that it needs a body. Hallelujah. God wanted to find expression on the earth and then he went to Mary a virgin and said, your womb, we can, we can do something to your womb. Will you allow us? And Mary said, be it unto me according to thy word. He said, okay, that's good. The Holy Ghost shall come upon you and the power of the highest shall overshadow you. Then, through that operation, what happened was that the man, Jesus, now came. That was how the word became flesh. Why? Because the goal of the spirit realm is that their will, their intent, their attributes, their characteristics finds expression on the earth. And the only way that is possible is through priesthood. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say with me, priesthood. So, when we speak about royal priesthood, what we are saying is that, listen, God's goal is not just that you speak in tongues. God's goal is not just that you are a nice Christian. God's goal is that your life does, your life has a kind of impact that men see. Now, that's a principle. We will share on that later at night. Men see your good works and then glorify your father. So this is how it works. You should be you should be great. When I mean great, I don't mean great in the eyes of men and, and, and with the words yardstick. To be great, so impactful and significant that men are too grateful for your existence. By virtue of their gratitude to your existence, you now point them to God and say, actually you, glory to God. <laughs> then they say, hey, tell us about this God. Revelation chapter 5 and verse 10. You see the same thing again. Revelation chapter 5 and verse 10. You see the same thing. Are you there? Can we read together again? One, two, read. And as what, sir? He has made us. Somebody say, I'm made. Uh huh. And has made us unto our God. Uh, uh, kings and priests uh huh. so although the focus the motive the goal and the priority of our existence is the glory of God eh, but our reigning is on earth stage one reigning is what many of us are doing in church including preachers do you know what stage one reigning is Stage one reigning, stage one dominion is casting out devils. Actually, in the spirit realm, that should be the easiest. You know why? The average believer should be able to cast out devils. 
since you are not with me. Are you with me? If the ultimate of your dominion is casting out devils, you didn't do well. No. <laughs> you didn't do well. Though. Because while you are posting your video online where you are casting out devils, Zuckerberg will come and say, all this falling down. The Facebook algorithm will say, mm, this looks violent. And then they will kick you out. <laughs> Because I'm going to teach you tonight on systems of dominion. Ah. See, I was pre- when I was preparing for this meeting, I was asking the Lord. Ah, should, there are some things I don't often preach about because I don't like preaching about it. Because some people have, I don't like problems. There are some things that are very personal to me. I only tell very, I don't. <laughs> but if you understand it and you use it, it works. It works. At different levels, but it works. Let me show you something very powerful. Now, in Revelation chapter 5, the Bible emphasizes again that, listen, you have been made kings and priests unto our God, and you shall reign. Now, so that's a step further. Is that true? It's not just kings and priests unto our God now. And you shall reign where? See, if your spiritual activity does not translate into physical solutions, it's not accurate. If your spiritual engagement does not bring any solution to your world and your generation, you are, waste, you are wasting spiritual energy. Don't just go around. One hour, two hours. Then you are even happy. Ah, I prayed in tongues for 20 hours. Yeah, as you begin, all those things are nice. I would encourage you. But there should come a day where like Daniel... You don't only speak in tongues. Okay, Daniel, this. You don't only pray. You must be able to download something. Prayer is intimacy and downloading. You see, when you go to Cyber Cafe, you pay them, and then they give you, what do you call that? Time. I can't remember what it is. Time. So you to browse. Then when the time is over, you are off. There are some good hotels. I don't know, but there are some good hotels that when you are there and you pay, they give you Wi-Fi. Is that true? Uh, okay. You don't know. Do you know? Yeah. Free network. That's what I mean. Is that correct? As you are intimate with God, there must be free download. Let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. It's like, I just wish you can grab. You see, so, some things that are important does not need to be said very fast. Huh? That I don't speak fast does not mean it's not power. What I'm telling you is it's powerful. Among the elders, they know it works. See, if you are in God and your life is not solving any problem, there is a there is a, you are in, there's problem like that already. Because as far as heaven is concerned, the only glory that God is getting in your life is singing in church. We are gathering together unto thee. Then if your hands are worship, shall back the Lord. Shall back the Lord, then you shall back the Lord. Oga, after that one, the whole six days of the week is not translating into anything. Then your priesthood is fault. Because as far as God is concerned, in his kingdom, this is how it happens. Because you are intimate with God, the holies of holies, you have spent time with him. He must give you wisdom to solve problems. Meaning he gives you purpose within his ultimate purpose. The ultimate purpose of God is that he's running a kingdom. And everybody who gets born again is enlisted as an ambassador of his kingdom. Is that true? So what you do is that you manifest his, his nature. Royalty is not what a believer should strive for. Royalty is the identity of a believer. The day you got born again, the royal bloodline was what began to flow on your inside. Why? Because you were not alive prior to the time you were saved. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1. And you, as he was dead in trespasses and sins. You were dead before you met Jesus. It's not that you were alive. You were dead, actually. And the only reason why you let to breathe in and out was that maybe you will hear the gospel and be Daniel will pray and he will tell the king, ah, let him come down. Now, do you know that in our generation, for example, and I'm not going to say high sounding things at all, but I want to challenge you. Are we together? In our generation, 
a lot 20 prayer warriors who can ra- who can rattle in tongues like a rattlesnake. If they lock them in this room now and the president now comes and says, if they don't tell me the dream I had last night, all of them will die. You'll be shocked that everybody will come out and say, well, uh, we, we, we are still that, we are trusting God. I'm, I'm not a prophet. Me, I'm, I'm a teacher. I'm a teacher. <laughs> ha! Please, don't, ma. It's God who reviews. Don't join those who go around bragging of spiritual power, bragging of a relationship with God, bragging when they stand before people to present. No, sir. What is, whose life is changing because of your existence? Royal priesthood is not standing in the holies of holies and just wearing one hijab and praying. That's not what I'm talking about. We are saying carrying Jesus. Not just evangelism. I'm sharing track. Amen. Amen. I'm saying Jesus on the street. Jesus in your hostel. That your, your hostel. Jesus there. Because of you, your department starts departmental fellowship. That's priesthood. Are we together here? Tomorrow now I'm going to be in a crusade at the school gate tomorrow. Many years in the morning I would walk around that place and I'll be speaking in tongues. And then I'll be making utterances. Your prayer should not be only tongues. It should be both tongues and scripture. Are we here? Your prayer is not powerful because it's only tongues. Tongues and scripture. Don't don't break the ordinance of the elders. It's scriptural. You pray scriptures. To one, see, I prefer starting with praying scriptures. You pray scriptures to a level, you burst into tongues, then you pray scriptures again. If you pray in tongues first, and then scriptures come, as you release it, sometimes you notice that if you are really, what you are praying begins to teach you. Some of you don't know how to walk in the gifts of the interpretation of tongues. Let me teach you how to walk in interpretation of tongues. It's a gift, yes, but, the, but there are ways. You see, the things of the Spirit are awesome. It's a lie, they, they are awesome, they are real. Anytime I feel that maybe there is a little confusion in my life, and I need to download wisdom, I don't go around everybody. Ah, see, oh, see my life, oh, see my life, oh, see what? I don't have time for that. Just stay alone with God. She be God is real. She be God is not a gadget in the church that used to make the service okay. You know there are some graduates if the Holy Ghost is not there, nobody will feel it because we have what we can use to replace Him. I will be comfortable. But real priesthood, you know that if it doesn't help you, there is nowhere you can go. You know, because you are a carrier of the Holy Ghost. You are, he's not coming and visiting. The Holy Ghost is not visiting you. He's either in you or it's not in you. Praise the Lord. So when you say I'm a carrier of the Holy Ghost, you have the life of God. You are a king and priest. So there is a dimension of you that is priest. There is a dimension of you that is king. And guess what? The two must bring glory to God. Unfortunately, we are trying to be successful in the priesthood, but have abandoned the kingly dimension. Because priesthood has more to do with your interaction with God, actually. Are we together? Please stay with me. Priesthood has more to do with your interaction with God. Because the assignment of a priest is to serve as an altar. Ah, thank you, Jesus. So, when a priest comes, he comes to serve as an altar, or he comes to commune with a spirit. As a child of God, you commune with the spirit of God. I need to explain something to you. Do you know the Holy Ghost? Do you know what it means to be the spirit of God? I think I need to explain. Because sometimes people say, well, uh, the Holy Ghost, it looks as if the Holy Ghost is the preacher's tool for manifestation. For example, if I want to say, if I want to say power here, I say, Holy Ghost. And then, they say, yes, the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is not a magic wand that you see in a reporter movie. That's not, the, the Holy Ghost is more than that. For you to be the Spirit of God, do you know what that means? <laughs> no man can know the thoughts of a man except the Spirit that is in that man. No man can know the thoughts of God except the Spirit that is in God. Now, the Bible says you are the temple of the Spirit that is in God. You don't know what that means. The Holy Ghost did not leave the Father. Even though the Holy Ghost left heaven, he didn't leave the Father. Because him and the Father too, they are one. The same way Jesus and the Father, they are one. Do you know what that means? If the Holy Ghost is in you, and you can't discern the thoughts of God, it's because you have not engaged him enough. There should be no confusion in your life. 
You shouldn't say, this says now, nah, I'm just confused. There's nothing, there's nothing. Which nothing? There is always activities. Only you that don't know. The Spirit of God. <laughs> Let me give you an example. Of priesthood. I'm going to teach you four keys of priesthood today. Then tonight I will now share on dominion. I, I need to talk about dominion. Do you realize that, you see, according to scripture, if you check every man that had a genuine work with God in the Old Testament, especially in the Old Testament and then in the New Testament too, you find out that the ones that had real work with God, they made impact. The ones that had real work. The ones that didn't have real work were busy with programs, but they didn't make impact. They had the cliche, they had the regalia, but they didn't have a work. Those were the Pharisees and the Sadducees. They knew, tell everybody that what they were doing was not right, but they were not doing anything. Ah. When you pray, and you pray, you get to a level where your thoughts begin to become one with the thoughts of God. There is a oneness. You are praying in tongues, you are praying scriptures, you are praying in tongues, suddenly one word can come forth from your mouth. And what you do with those words is, you don't say it once and leave it. See, this is I'm telling you. You repeat it. As you repeat those words, it begins to form on your inside. It becomes stronger on your inside. See, for for 12 years, I've been writing. For 12 years, for example. For 12 years, I've been writing. Go born again in 2009. I'm beginning. The day again, the Holy Ghost, we start writing. That's the thing. And for 12 years, I was writing. And I was praying during COVID. I was praying, Holy Spirit, something you want me to do. I just felt because we're having 100 days of prayer and fast. And, and the Holy Spirit wants me to do something. But I didn't know what He wanted me to do. So priesthood is engaging him. And then I began to pray. And in less than 10 minutes. I don't mean the Holy Ghost must answer you in less than 10 minutes. Remember I said 100 days of prayer and fasting. So there is a track record. When I show you the keys now you understand. There is a track record. But one of those days. We were praying in the spirit. You know people falling online. And the spirit of God just whispered to me. What do you have in your hand? Some of you, the only thing you need is a question. And you see, when God asks you a question, he's not looking for an answer. He's the omniscient. If God is looking for an answer, he ceases to be omniscient. He should not be worshipped. That means he lied to us. He's calmed us. <laughs> because if God is looking for an answer, that means God does not know the answer to Nigeria's problem. <laughs> Praise the Lord. When God asks a question, he's not looking for an answer. What he's looking for is a response of faith or repentance, but not an answer. Mm. Has God asked you a question before? <laughs> when God asks you a question, he's not looking for what? An answer. He's looking for a response of faith. For example, he asked Isaiah the prophet. He said, look at these dry bones. Can they live? Isaiah, if Isaiah said no, he would say, all right then. To another prophet. Let's look for another prophet that can align. Some of you are rejecting purpose because you feel that you are not capable enough to pursue it. Let God ask you a question. He asked Moses, what is this in your hand? Moses said, eh, it's a glove. He kicked another and another. He goes, oh. <laughs> he put, okay, throw it down first. And then it became a serpent. What? I've been holding a serpent. God said, yeah, take it back by detail. Detail. <laughs> God said it's mysterious. If it's me, I won't take it back home. He lay out the hell. <laughs> we'll go and cut another one. God said, take it by the tail. Moses takes it. Wow. Ah. There is nothing that will be mighty on earth that must not begin first from the realm of the spirit. When God asks you a question, so God asks, what do you have? And I say, ah, what can I do? I only speak and I write. There are other things I do that I don't like to talk about. But I speak and I write. Those are two I know I do. Like I do do. The Lord said, okay, so what are those documents doing on your phone? I said, oh, my documents, they are still, 
you are just there. You know my plan? This is like a mentoring class so I can say some things. Is that alright? Now, do you know that my plan was that every year, Equip cost me almost a million to print. Every year, I was just printing one, one copies. Uh, one, one title. So that means in 14 years, I will release 14 books in 14 years. That means I would have grown white hair and all that. Listen, the spirit of God can bring the future into the now. Mm. Just like you don't know where I will be in the next six months. I don't know where you will be in the next six months. That's why men of wisdom, they honor people and they, they, they have humility. Because they, they know something that you do. A man's life can change. This meeting now, somebody's life can change because of this meeting. PG last year. Are you here? Hey, Jesus. I'm not talking about the glories of yesterday. I'm not. It's not because maybe God didn't move since last year, PG. It's not true. It's not true. What I'm saying is that you saw the, the prophetic flow and God confirmed his word. It was last week, I just got to know. One of those, praise the Lord. And we hadn't discussed, you know, we, we hadn't met. Praise the Lord. Okay, those that know, know, God bless you in Jesus' name. The anointing is real. The anointing is not falling down. The anointing is not shouting. The anointing is not jumping up on mic. The anointing is not sweating. The anointing, what shows that it is the anointing is that it must break yokes. If it does not break you, it's not anointing. Guy. Oh, sorry. Brother. <laughs> the anointing. <laughs> I'm feeling steered in my spirit. Priesthood is you and God. That's see. I don't honor, I honor all men. But the men that really work with God, I honor them differently. Because those ones can change a generation. The reason why kings will not come to you yet is because your priesthood is not downloading anything. The only thing you can you are downloading is new new tongues. What God is looking for now is not new new tongues, is bring results. Change somebody's life. Don't wait to walk in the world of knowledge or the world of wisdom when you are in church premises. The reason the keys of the spirit are stronger when you are not in church premises. <laughs> hey. The first time I would see the lame walk in my ministry, it was open air. It was not inside church meeting. If you bring a cripple here, I will minister to you. Let's go outside where people can see. Because if it happens here, you know what you will do? You will just clap. It will end there. Is it not church people? That's why in John, in PG, this meeting now, there are some people that you need to say, brethren, eh, can we can we consider share and say, eh, eh, my status is full tomorrow. Eh, that one is not kingdom minded like that. <laughs> Do you know what five minutes counsel can do to a destiny? Three weeks ago, I was in a meeting on campus. And a lady that wanted to do, look at her problems, oh, Yahoo, Yahoo, on campus. 100 level lady wants to do Yahoo, Yahoo. You were in that meeting, Abi. You were there. 100 level lady wanted to do Yahoo, Yahoo, number one. Number two, she wanted to do Ukop. Do you know what Ukop is? I did. Even me. I didn't know who up. Then I said who up is. But the hook up they were doing on campus that they are doing now on campus is that you link guys and girls together and they, they'll pay for linking them together. It's a new business. That's number two she wanted to do. Number three, she was struggling with a problem called seizure for over five years. Do you know what seizure is? She can be on the street like this and just begin to convulse. And in one meeting, less than two hours, Every, her mother had hypertension because of her. It was too terrible. Listen, she went. She went to church. She went. She went to Yao. She went to her balis. They've taken her head and nothing changed. And in two hour meeting, her life changed. She's not. She calls herself my PA in three weeks. She's no more doing Yao. She's no more doing Ukop. The seizure has left. She. She has stopped using her drugs. She fasts before she, she dare not try. She fasted and even in that meeting She came like that and said let's see She fasted till 6pm Till she left that meeting that didn't happen She went to redemption camp for this LTP that they just did Nothing happened to her She's back and she's still LD Nothing has happened Listen it's not that we are checking I'll be something will happen It cannot happen again Whatsoever the Lord do it It shall be forever It depends on who is administering it Are we together? You can receive a miracle and lose it It depends on the priesthood at work Are we here? Are we together? Thank you, Jesus.
1 Peter chapter 2 verse 9. So I'll give you some keys of priesthood. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9. Light of the world, you step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see. May God open somebody's eyes here. May God show you that what he has given you is not too small. Some of you are too... Listen. Sister Tolani, I need to tell your people this. Your ministry does not need to add a name to make impact. Some of you, the reason why you will not begin is because you are still looking for a name. Some, listen, sit down. Some would even come and they will say, Ah, God gave me a name. Okay, what name? The name of my own ministry is Eternity Kingdom Network, Kingdom Minded Youth, International Global Harvest Church. Oga. Okay. One came to me and gave me like 11 names. I said, he said, he said it's the only ghost. I said, uh uh-uh. uh. Just say you look at ministries you like and con- it's not the Holy Ghost. These things in business school, you, you already teach you some of those things. I said, it's not the Holy Ghost. It's, I said, because you are arguing, it's, I said, it's not God that told you this one. God can give you these nine names. Ah! I even told him, it's even better there's no name. Just within your mind. Brother Ananias that laid hands on Paul the Apostle didn't have a ministry name. But what he did till eternity, no man has done it. Do you know who Paul was? You think Paul was just a preacher? Paul was writing letter. Paul didn't know that they would preserve it. He was writing letters. And his letter is what we call Bible. Bible. Or Abi. Abi. Bible said, no prophecy is of pri- any private interpretation. Only they speak as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. They called Paul the holy man. Say holy. Paul said, I'm holy man. <laughs> man that was persecuting the church in Acts 8. Suddenly you are now writing for the old church and everything is falling. Even Peter had to say, we don't understand the wisdom of our brother Paul, but let's not follow him. We don't know what he's saying. Why? New pre- Not talking deep. He's living deep. Priesthood is being living deep. Don't look deep. Don't sound deep. Be deep. Oh, yeah, back, back. I like that one. Don't don't talk deep. Live deep. Be deep. Don't be. Eh, eh, go, mm, you are, mm, are you deep? Hi. That your life. If, see, a non-believer should meet you and be and be willing to know Jesus. Not just because you packed your new car and then you came out in your fine shoe. See oh, I just love Jesus like this. See how she's just fine. I just love Jesus. Oh. <laughs> we are talking some better than that. He said, see, Christianity is the communication of the life of God. The life, the real one, the real life that was the light of men. If the life of God in you does not become light to men around you, it may not be the light of God. It may be your traditional light, your traditional Christianity life, light. That's why it's not changing anybody. It's only making, it's conditioning your behavior. Modification of behavior is not what Christianity does. The gospel does not come to make bad people good. It raises the dead and gives you the life of God. Praise the Lord. First Peter 2 9. Hey, I love this one. I love this one. First Peter chapter 2 verse 9. No. Are you twins? Uh, you will receive something. You didn't say, hey, this is, are they coming for the first time? Uh, you will receive something. Sit down, my sister. Do not worry. Sit down. Can we read it? I want us to read it together. First Peter chapter 2 verse 9. One to go. But. Every time but is introduced in a statement. It's a change of direction. There may be something they were saying before. When I say but. Naaman was a mighty man. But he was a left hand. He says what sir? But. Not everybody is a new creator. Not everybody. Pastor. You, you were, you were a comedian before. And they wanted to tell me the things you used to do before you got born again. Okay, just crack jokes. Okay, that one will not take you to a fire. Which one that? There should be something. Okay, just zip up. Okay, well, see, even if you didn't dance to hip hop, as long as you don't have Christ, you go to hell. Even if you were going to church, if you don't have Christ, you go to eh? Okay, but you are just cracking jokes. I, I thought you were a very terrible sinner, so you are not a terrible sinner. What is that? Listen, you let's say you were smoking, you were lying, you were a murderer, you, you committed 50 abortion, but 
Ah yeah. This meeting for some of you. This meeting for some of you is box. <laughs> eh, I'm I'm still looking for the money. Eh, I lost money. I'm in debt. I they stole it. But <laughs> see some meetings, some meetings. Some of you don't even understand the spiritual implication of purpose guard. Do you know the meaning of purpose guard? It's not for people that are looking for. They are not looking for something. We are gathering as people who have found it and want to come and express it. We are not looking for it. We are it. You know why? It, you are not looking for your purpose in heaven. It's inside you. You just need to dig the well out of your belly shall flow rivers. That rivers is not just tongues. It's spiritual realities manifesting through wisdom, manifesting through your sphere of influence, whatever it is. But it's spiritual. Listen, if you think that gaining uh, submitting CV after graduation. And working in an office, and you think it's not spiritual, you think it's secular, you don't understand Christianity. Everywhere for the child of God is the holy ground. Why are Christians not being promoted today? And when they want to say, We want to lay people off, it's Christians that don't have resources that they are laying off. If you are indispensable to the workplace, your boss will say, You, it is not for you, leave them. Don't be, don't be mediocre. See, this night, what I'm coming to, I want to challenge you and then I, I, I want to push you into destiny. So you need somebody to push you. Are you together? You go and meet somebody to advise you. The person tells you, not now, not now, not now. 50 years, not now. No, sir. There has to be a time. There is a set time for everybody. And if you allow a man to determine the calculator, I'm um, sorry, the, the, the timing of your pursuit of destiny, you will never rise. Because your timing is not in the hands of man. It's in the hands of God. When you have a disciple, a mentor, a pastor that you submit to, what the man of God does is not to manipulate you. Are you together? It's not to make himself glory over your life. No, sir. It's to guide you into fulfilling the will of God. If that guidance means they tell you stay for a season, you can stay. Do you understand? But not that they are anti-purpose. Don't work with people who are not purpose-driven. They will waste your time and your data. In COVID, some of you entered into fear and IBP because the friends you have, they are not purpose driven. They are only problem driven. So they go, 20,000 people, comma, times 204 have died. And then you, you join them. Everybody is sharing. They've never shared their church flyer, but they are sharing COVID. Are, are you a COVID? Are you a COVID? Huh? Are you a COVID or a gospeler? Which one are you? I, I, I have to mute till today. I've not unmuted some people. Because listen, in the day of crisis Only people of purpose survive They don't only survive, they thrive Because it is in trouble That you know who you really are The world cannot get brighter It will get darker, but your light will shine brighter and brighter Why? The part of the just Is as the shining light Shines more and more Until Do you know what that means? Once you begin on the path of purpose It can only get better The challenges will be stronger but no sir, you will become wiser because of it You know why? Purpose is like a seed It never dies When Jesus said except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies Ah, I feel like prophesying Except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies It abides alone But if it dies, it bears forth much fruit What it's actually saying is that In the kingdom, burial is different from planting Your dreams are not buried, they are planted you have discovered it, but everything now looks bad. I don't know who I'm talking to. It is planted. Planting is not burial. Burial is that there is no hope for resurrection. But when Jesus came, it's true that he was buried, but it was a planting. Because the power of the resurrection cannot stay too long in the grave. Paul said, for it was impossible for the grave to hold him. Listen, if it is purpose, no matter how much you try to contain it and localize it, if it is original and you are following it, uh -uh. listen, the anointing can teach you. Purpose can lead you. It is as you obey God that you find out that that thing that God told you in your room, it, it was more than that. But you didn't see it the day he told you. Because that's how God works. Are you here? The day I got born again was the day ministry call came. But I didn't know. Three years after, God now said, that thing you saw, this. And I said, ah. But I thought, I said, ah, you didn't know. Embedded in your call to salvation is a call to Purpose. Don't say I'm still, I don't know I don't know what to do in my life Whatsoever you have fights to do What are you doing now? 
Can it bring glory to God? Can you start with that one first? If you wait forever in hibernation and you don't pursue what God wants to do, you will never raise a nation for God. If you are waiting, you are waiting on God is not a waste of time, but don't waste, wait foolishly. Those that wait are not waiting redundantly. Waiting means you are doing what God told you to do, even when the results are not yet there, but you are doing what God told you to do. Is waiting. Waiting does not mean inactivity. Waiting means active spirituality. You are you are on fire, but you are waiting. Currently in my life now, the season I am is a season of waiting. Why did I say that? Listen, you can know that what you carry is not for where you are. Are you here? Hi. I was preaching for them in uh, Czech Republic. Uh, maybe last month or thereabout. Professor and big, big men of God were there. A church, Rehoboth, RCCG prayed. And when I was done, one of the lecturers said, Ah, I'm a lecturer. Where did you? Ah, how did? The man of God is a professor that hosted, you know, that invited me. I was the only, I was the only Nigerian minister there, of course. And I was the youngest. I mean, I mean, I was the youngest. Because I'm in my 20s. I was the youngest. These are elderly men. But, and I was the one to have the opening session. By the time I was done, all my books on Amazon, they ordered for everything. And in about seven days or thereabout, prime, it got to them there. They wanted to institutionalize the knowledge I was presenting. Do you know what that means? They didn't buy the book individually to be reading. They bought it and put it in church library. Meaning as many generations that come, they will pick it and read it. Why? If you don't believe in what God put in you, nobody will believe in it for you. You think anybody is ready to just support you like that? Who are you? People have global dreams. And yet, the, the evil day, and listen, when God, I, there is something called the principle of beginning. Beginning is small, but it's beautiful. If it does not begin, it can never be great. Am I helping somebody already? I just felt like talking about it. You are in debt. You are frustrated. That's in fact, that's the best posture where with God can, can meet you and use you. You call them the mighty men of David, but originally they were the broke men of David. Because when they to David in Adulam, all of them were broke like this. All of them, they were broke. You think they had my fine suit, my kind of fine suit. You think they had fine suit. They were broke. The Bible called them discontented men. But I think Cape Adulam was like a purpose garden. David was telling them, mm, you, the way you held the spear yesterday, when I wanted to cut that antelope to eat all of us, there's something about it. There's, listen, the natural points to the spiritual. The things you are doing in the natural that looks as if you are not praying or speaking in tongues. Eh, don't, don't. I looked at praise last year, gathering, and I knew that there is an anointing on that lady for things that has to do with administration and leadership. About it, no, we didn't. But I, if, the way she was, I said, "It's like this one is wired for." Ah, I felt impressed. I don't even know if I gave to her. Because when people impress me, I give to them. I felt, ah, Hirokini, ah. I said, ah, Kini, there's something about this one. This one is not the normal one. There's an anointing. Listen, anything you do easily, forget it. There's an anointing for it. I'm looking for my purpose. I'm telling you now. There's an anointing for it. Jeremiah said, "And the what?" Jeremiah saying, before I formed you in the belly, I knew you. I ordained you to be a prophet to the nations. Then Jeremiah said, then I said, ah, Lord, that's a sign. Jeremiah was naturally a talker. God now said, I will not just allow you to be a parrot, be a prophet. Aaron, too, was in the camp. He will be the one who will be playing. Then God said, eh, 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 Moses, you say you're a stammerer. That's all right. Your stammering does not hinder the purpose of God. Just like you don't have money, it does still not hinder the purpose of God. Purpose is greater than finance. It, listen, it is in the direction of purpose that money likes to come. Money. You know money has wings. <laughs> it's the magnet of prosperity. Purpose. I mean, when I mean purpose, God's will is the real magnet, not us. You know why some of us are not succeeding very well? Huh? Your purpose, you are taking it as a side hustle. When you use the main thing as a side hustle, you won't be great like that. Because you will be careless. You will not pay attention to details. Because after all, it's just a side. What if those my books, I wrote rubbish there. I didn't research anything. 
I just wrote nonsense. They now, you think they will even invite me to come and preach for two hours? So people had families. It's not them. Um, some youth conference. So these are people who are rich and wealthy. But they knew I had something to say. And by the time I was done, the man of God also said, "I'm flabbergasted." Ah. Then the things that ought to be sent in accompaniment of impact, it has to be sent. It was sent. Praise the Lord. The Lord give you understanding. They even said, eh, we are so sorry, it's quite small. So I said, it's all right. We yeah. like ah, what you call I said, eh, we, we bless the Lord. One time I went to make impact somewhere. It was so powerful. SS turned to A. All kinds of miracles happened. Guess what? When I was leaving, all the people that followed me, they gave, they gave them honorarium. The people that followed me, not 10, 10K, not 15K, not honorarium. Like honor. The real amen. There are some is honor, honorary of the ever lolly transfer. Do you know that one? <laughs> then there's honorary of hallelujah. That one. When my wife touched the check and saw, my wife said, Go, this guy, go call him. <laughs> I said, hey, I said, I told you. <laughs> Listen, even though we don't preach for money, even if I was not preaching, whatever you are doing, number one, do it for the glory of God. If God was your supervisor in your department and it was your HOD. Will you will it judge you faithful with the way you are treating lectures? Because you are shouting priesthood as if priesthood is just rabba rabba rabba. Or God, if your Christianity does not even affect the unbelievers, who told you to please God? Let your light so shine. Don't let it shine. Let it so shine. There should be something about you. Listen, when God is telling you to be serious about destiny and He brings you to programs like this, it's because God has seen the future. The Bible says declaring the end from the beginning. It means God has gone to finish it in our reverses and, and we start now. But you, you cannot see the end from the beginning. Even when God shows you a vision, we have defined vision to be a mental picture of your future. But listen, even at that, you don't see all, you only know a part. Because if you see everything like that, you will not trust God to be. So as you work with God, the part of purpose and God tells you diligence, be serious. You say eh, it doesn't matter. No, it matters because if King see that your product is rubbish, listen. In Genesis one, it says, "Be fruitful, multiply, replenish, subdue." Right? Don't listen. Tonight I'm going to explain. I'm going to open it up. All those things are actually kingdom systems. If you don't know them, you will remain where you are. You will believe God. You will speak in tongues, but you will not be anything. And listen, if nothing comes out of your priesthood, you didn't glorify God. How do I know? John chapter 17, verse 4. John chapter 17 and verse 4. Jesus was down. John 17, 4. Somebody, can you read it? I have glorified you on the earth. I have finished the work which you sent me. So do, please sit down. So let me ask you a question. Did how did how many times in your Bible did you see the Bible says and Jesus was glorifying the Father and he was lifting up holy hands and saying, Father, to you, Lord, be all the glory. To you, Lord. Did you see Jesus do that? In fact, how many? There were only maybe two times. There was once the Bible says, and Jesus rejoiced in the spirit. You didn't see Jesus because some of us are so religious, we don't understand true spirituality. Jesus said, I have glorified you by finishing. That means if you have not started at all, you may be singing glory, but before God, God is hearing glory, but he's not seeing glory. Lord, I love you, Lord. Yeah, 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 yeah. God said, the angel put keyboard. Pam, 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 pam. Okay, alpha. Until you have discovered purpose, the level of the glory you give to God is very minimal. It's only the third dimension you will be able to do. But when you find purpose and you find you in Christ, because when you come for Bible study, you come for conferences, what we are showing you is Jesus, but we are showing you you. Because it's as you behold him that you become like him. So whatever you are becoming is a product of what you are beholding. If you follow a man that does not know where he's going, you too will not go anywhere. You'll be going, but you don't know where. Are you here? I have glorified you by finishing royal priesthood. 
royalty, go and check. Even in ancient movies, a king likes to finish something. Go and check. They don't just do half and say, eh. no, 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 they like to finish it. Finish. Out. So it means you can finish before you die. He said, is as he's dying, it now finish. No, 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 no. How can a man finish 33 and the half? And that's that's okay for heaven. No, I shall not die but live. Oh, I shall be what? I shall be 5,000. Ross. And most times, what we are looking for is just duration of earthly existence, not longevity of impact. There are people today. See, when you discover purpose, you will discover that time is not enough somehow. Sometimes you are praying, God, can, can I have 26 hours instead of 24 hours? And somebody else is on WhatsApp waiting for the next person to upload status. And you have 300 contacts and you have looked at the status of 300 people. What? You looked at the status of 300 people in one day. How did you do it? That means you are not busy now. But you, but you want the Holy Ghost in you to, to, to just show you purpose. No sir, no sir, no sir, no sir, no sir. What you invest is what you invest. If you sow to the spirit, you reap life. If you sow to the flesh, you reap, you reap corruption. Am I challenging somebody here? Priest to royal priesthood is that your access to God must bring you to that point where your, your, your life, your impact is so strong that it brings you access before kings. But the way God does in purpose is interesting. What God does, you see what I'm telling you, it's not, it's not a sermon. I'm telling you what I, do you understand? This is what I live. What God does is that when he begins to woo you to purpose, he tells you who are you. Then you begin to read books. What is my purpose? <laughs> but once you settle it first that my purpose is to bring God glory, then everything begins to change. How do I mean? Even your dressing is to glorify God. Glorify God. Your mind of life to glorify God. Your interaction with people to glorify God. The way you do business to glorify God. The way you do ministry to glorify God. Then you begin to find out that uh, uh, I've been looking for purpose, but purpose has always been here. You are not looking for purpose. You just need to start doing purpose. That means there is a mentality that you have that others don't have. Why will you be a child of God and you will say things like, I, I pray in tongues for lecturer to not come. I cancel the lecture with capital letter tongues. If you are doing that, your school fees was a waste. Go and learn carpentry. Since you want to be like Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's it now. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. If you are a purposeful person and you have found that it's for the glory of God, you will do it right. Relationship for the glory of God, let's do it right. You have made your decision already. Then you went to meet your pastor and said, Hey, daddy, hey, there's one guy. At the immediate introduction, of God, and he came. Mokele, my fatherly blessing. It's, you, what you gave him, you, it's not submission. You have graduated from submission to information. You only informed him. <laughs> you decided. You only informed. Are we together? Doing everything right. Why? Because it is for the glory of God. Paul said, "Me too. I finished. I fought." The fight. I finished the race. Ah, uh, Paul, you are not yet the boss. I'm done. I'm done. Can you be done and even know you are done and you, and you know you are done? And purposes are very different. Listen, they are in phases. The vision of God for your life is phases. There are some people are doing it. You think this is what I will do with all my life? Then God will say, "Oh God, this was for you four years. Now we have marked you." I will feel that you're a faithful steward. So now, this is now. You now need to location now. And go and now do. Because it's in phases. I mean, if you are not faithful where you are, don't don't pray for any promotion. It, if it should happen, it will become the prosperity of fools. It will lead to problem for you. Are you faithful? For example, maybe you are part of this ministry. Are you faithful? Because God will not commit your own to you if you are not committed to the things of another. That's what the Bible says. Our generation is so obs- obsessed with platforms. We are f- that you are the platform. You are we together? You don't need to compromise for a platform. You are you like this. You are. Should we are the temple of the Holy Ghost? You are the Holy Ghost is enough now. 
to begin whatever I want you to do. Jonathan and, and his armor bearer said, What is it with God? Either to win with many or with few. But can you obey first? Four keys to priesthood and then we'll pray and then I'm done for first. Ever living, ever present, Yahweh. The keys to effective priesthood. Number one, faith in God. Faith in God. And I'll explain. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 to 4. You find what we call the treatise of the gospel. Right? According to Paul. The reason I said faith in God is the foundation for effective priesthood. It's because you are a natural man. My sister, sorry, my what's your name? Victoria. Aha. You see, your name even goes without faith. You know, faith is for victory. Faith, victory. You know, when you have faith as a daughter, your next daughter, victory. Praise the Lord. Victor. Ah, <laughs> Victor. Praise the Lord. Look at this now. Look at this. You are human. You have five senses. You have a spirit. It's true. But God is invisible. Your senses cannot capture him. It is by faith that you are able to believe the message of the gospel. Why? The regenerating work of the Holy Spirit on your inside. Hebrews 11.1 1, Through faith we understand that the words were framed by the word of God. Is that true? It's by faith. It's by faith. Thank you Jesus. 1 Corinthians 15. When you begin reading from verse number 1, Paul began to tell us that listen, only one kind of message. And there's only one kind of gospel. The real gospel, the true one. And he said, this is the gospel that we preach to you. And what is it? That Christ died. He was buried. He rose again. He died. So what is the gospel? The good news. That Christ came. He lived this world. He died. He was, he rose again. And Paul began to exalt the resurrection. Because if Jesus did not resurrect, then our hope and our faith is in vain. It's a waste of life. And so, when you come believing the message of the gospel, what happens is not a changed life. It's an exchange life. You receive his life. Praise the Lord. Somebody say with me, I have his life. <laughs> You've received the life of God. Meaning that your nature has changed even though your behavior does not change automatically. And that's why you hear Paul now begin to say, brothers and sisters, walk out your salvation with fear and trembling. He's not saying walk for, he says walk it out because it's already on your inside. It takes faith to believe that truly Jesus came, he died. Because you were not there when he came. In fact, people that were there when he came still paid soldiers to go and say that he did not rise again. So it had to take the enlightenment of the Holy Spirit Walking through the message of the gospel that you received. That was what made you get born again. And that's why First Peter 1 23 says, Be born again, not of corruptible seed, but by the incorruptible seed of, of God that lives and abides forevermore. Faith. Faith. Romans chapter 1 verse 16, popular scripture. For I am not ashamed of the gospel. So when you believe the gospel You now you were made one with God You became joint heirs with Christ Hallelujah You are one with God You are not struggling to meet God Like the Old Testament priests He lives on your inside You are conscious of his presence You are not struggling with your identity You know him and he knows you Praise God And it is that same faith That will carry you when all hope is lost as you pursue destiny, it's still faith in God. Ah, uh-uh, I'm a child of God. I may fail, but I'm not a failure. I will rise again. Why? The resurrection power cannot stay down forever to rise. But that's just number one. Faith. In fact, the priests in the Old Testament, how were they able to do their priesthood? Because the only thing they saw there was Aaron's rod that bordered. Menor- the menorah, the table of shoe bread, and all those articles. But the God was God was not there. Alright? When I mean God, I mean in his goodness. It's not there. And yet they died. Listen, if the act the covenant could kill priests, 
How much more now that the Holy Ghost lives on your inside? Who told you that that spirit cannot give life to you and you through you? And life does, does, does not have to be life is more than breath. Life is the will of God finding expression. You know what that means? Purpose gathering is life. Why? The will of God is life. How do you know that a ministry is alive? It's not because they are bubbling on social media. It's because they are perpetuating the will of God. If it is not about the will of God, there's no life in it. Are we together? Number two, quickly. Effective priesthood. Practical consecration. Practical consecration. Second Corinthians chapter 6. Verse 14 downwards. To chapter 7 verse 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 You can bring it down a little Thank you Holy Spirit wow. Look at this 2 Corinthians chapter 6 beginning from verse 14 Very. I read Do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers For what fellowship He uses the word fellowship Has righteousness With lawlessness And what communion has light with darkness and what I call as Christ with Belial, or what part has a believer with an unbeliever, and what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God, as God has said, I will dwell in them and walk among them. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Therefore, let's read now. Come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Don't touch what is unclean. I will receive you and I will be a father to you and you shall be my sons and daughters says the almighty verse 1 now of chapter 7 therefore having these promises dearly beloved let us clean ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Let us cleanse ourselves. This is not God now coming to cleanse now. You need to understand that justification is that God has declared you righteous before God. So when you pray in the name of Jesus, God hears you. Not on your own accord, but because of what Jesus has done. But sanctification is your participation based on the fact that you have been justified. So you have been made right with God. But sanctification is that you are now participating in what God is doing externally. What God has worked on your inside, you are now working it out. Are we together? Are we together? This is priesthood. Exodus chapter 19 verse 6. This is priesthood. Exodus chapter 19 verse 6. And you also see it in Exodus chapter 22. Okay, let me allow someone to read. Exodus 19 verse 6. You shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and an holy nation. Thank you. A kingdom of priests and an holy nation. Why? Because as far as priesthood is concerned, holiness is the all mark. And guess what? Holiness, holiness is not not wearing necklace. Holiness is not not wearing earrings. Holiness is not not wearing trousers. The word holy according to scriptures from the word kadosh or kadas or kodesh. It's not my father tongue. It's, it's my mother tongue. It's not my mother tongue. It's Hebrew. Hallelujah. The word holy has to do with other, 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 otherness. Separateness. God is holy other because he is completely separate from what he created. He doesn't mean not doing or doing. His first word separateness. So when the Bible says the believer, you should be holy, it means be separate from this world because you are not of this world. Meaning that your mentality about life should not be that of a non-believer. You should not be sad when bad things happen. You can feel sad, but don't be sad. Why? Because what you have on your inside is joy. It's not happiness. Happiness is a dependent variable. Joy is an independent variable. Why? Because the kingdom of God is not in meat and drink. It's in righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. 
Because as you begin to pursue purpose, there will be times when people will betray you. They will walk away from you. You will tell them your secrets. They will go and implement it somewhere. You don't know. <laughs> but later you find out that joy. Paul in his day said people preach the gospel for strife. How can you preach the gospel for strife again? Well, it happens. But joy. Sometimes, listen, you may have tears in your eyes, but joy. But you are still... You, you are... If you don't see when you pursue purpose to a level, you will cry. It's not it's not a cause, you will cry. But again, when you now compare the sufferings of this present time to the glory that is ahead, you just dry your tears and say, Is that I know what God showed me now? My eyes may be shedding tears, but that's not what I saw. What I saw is greater than what is happening. So my circumstances cannot determine my emotions. The word of God is strong enough to determine how I feel. So it doesn't matter how I feel. What I believe is stronger than how I feel. Conviction is stronger than emotions. <laughs> if you tell a person, that brother has HIV, don't have sex with him. The person may first be doing agidi, but when he has HIV, even if he feels, hey, then he feels, um, my HIV, I'm not, I'm not in the mood. <laughs> Conviction is stronger than emotions. Theology is stronger than is, is stronger than your biology. Your body may be going one way, but when you know God, that's why it is only those that know their God that can be strong and do express. And it is in priesthood that you can know God because priesthood is about intimacy, it's about fellowship, it's a common union with the Holy Ghost. It's an interaction. That's why prayer is not to prove a point to your neighbor. Prayer is not to let them know that we are the men of prayer. You know, men of prayer don't stand straight in our generation. Men of prayer must. Then there's a way we hold. If it's Mike we are using, there's a way. Say, ah, he's a man of prayer. No, no, no. You you can be like this and you're a man of prayer. <laughs> Nehemiah in Nehemiah chapter two verse four. Nehemiah was a man of prayer. The king asked him a question before the king got his answer. He had already prayed. How? That man was working New Testament in New Testament in a way. That means you could pray in your workplace without you constituting a nuisance. When I was in first bank, so even the way you don't go to first bank, you, when, when you are working in the bank, walking the tongue, shake, robo, shake, shake, bring the money, shake, robo, shake, baby. What's all that? That's not what they are looking for. Is that why they employed you? If you know it's shake, go to your church. Let give them, let them give you salary. I'll be doing That's not what they are doing banking. You know. Are you here? Okay, since you are not here, I'll, are you here? Somebody shout glory. <laughs> That's not what you are doing there. So on, on Mondays in our prayer meetings, when I go there on Mondays, I serve them the Holy Ghost. They know. I serve them the Holy Ghost. The power of God moves. Healing and deliverance. Uh, the one that need, uh, they, they receive things. Yes. And they do well, but they receive things. But uh, that's not only the only thing that happens. It's as if Joseph was in their midst. You know why? My, our, our senior manager told me that there's something about you. Because the gifts of the spirit works very well in those places too. I said, Madam, I'm sorry. This is the issue with your family. I hope you are not offended. I'm not offended. I'm not. You see, people in the world are more receptive than church folks. That's why we are not seeing miracle in church like before again. Forget. See, I'm not talking of stage manage somebody that. No, I'm not talking of going to different churches and perform the same healing. I'm not talking of that. One. I'm talking of real, real miracle outside there. They need Jesus like something else. <laughs> then I just said. Mm-hmm. And you see, that's one of the tools God gave me. The word of knowledge. Uh-uh. Say, Madam, this, this, that. I said, yeah. I started crying. I said, help that one. This one. The power of God was so strong. Guess what? And I said, why do I see promotion? Our manager was now turned to SS manager. Then, the next week, testimony, everybody. I said, that's Christian. When I wanted to leave, they said, please don't. Just even, don't even work. Just be, just be part of us. I even wanted to, I left the group. They said, Come, but which group are you living? Why can't you leave us like this? You are our pastor. I said, Hey, if I was not a pastor, yeah, still call me their pastor because the life of God. Listen, are you traceable to, to Jesus? And is Jesus traceable to you? If you don't wear church logo, are you sure they will know that you are a Jesus carrier? Or until you talk in tongues, come out! They say, Ah, our ah, Christian. No, they should see a carrier, but they say, There's something. Pastor, let me. They say, Come, pastor. The life of God. As you know, it's something you can't. We beat the target. We broke the record like five times. Ah! Then everybody was there. This is what we are talking about. I said, My assignment here is done. 
I didn't leave us. Ah, uh-uh, the ill office. No, no, no. I left with honor and dignity. Are you together here? Hey, that's how to do this. If you leave a place and people felt, ah, thank God he left. You, you were a body. You were not a body lifter. They say, ah, thank God. Hey, yeah. Then in the secret, they say, ah, thank God. Though. Ah, ah. No. Everywhere I live by the grace of God, they, they should miss you. You not lost something like this. Two weeks ago, our senior manager wanted to do something in their church. She said, can you just come? Just be part of I said, I'm not just part of something. The reason why they are not inviting you to some places is because you have not affected them. The, the invitation is with them, but they, they, you have not affected them. Your WhatsApp is full of gossip and Shapa. You still have time to be posting about Shapa. Who is, who is Shapa help? It's you that will say, by their word you shall be justified. And by their word you shall be condemned. But you that is saying Shapa. Oh, who are you? There is confusion of identity. That's why you are not consistent. You are not, we are not, we don't know you today. Where are you there? Praise the Lord. Number one is what faith. Number two, practical consec- consecration. Isaiah chapter 52, verse 11. Practical consecration. Isaiah chapter 52, verse 11. Practical consecration. Be ye separate. Touch no unclean thing. Daniel chapter 1, verse 8. Daniel was in Babylon, but Babylon was not in Daniel. Daniel said, no sir, I'm sorry, but I will not defile myself with a portion of the king's meat. He knew that those foods were sacrificed to idols. So I won't, I won't be a part of it. Can you give us vegetables and beans? Or vegetables? Or not vegetables? Okay, we'll be okay. We'll be fine. Give us water. Why? Because Daniel knew something. He knew, listen, those that know their God, not those that can talk it, those that know, they know, they know so when they are talking it, the potency is different because they know they are thing. Some are those going online. Today, I have moved. Oh God, do you even know what you are saying here? Do you know? Uh, today, I now have my new... Ch- and <laughs> Confession of scripture will lead to frustration if you don't know the God that you are confessing is one. Because it will be like, you think it's one of the charms of Christ. It's not a charm. It's based on relationship. Praise the Lord. So practical consecration. What's your life like in the secret? Do you even have integrity? That's why we cannot trust God because we think God is like us. Ah, uh, and God, you promised me, God, can, will you still? We can, can you? Uh, that promise is still for. If for me, let let pastor say. It. Then if it's for me, let Dickens still say. It. Let Gio now say it. Oh God, once has he spoken? That means faith coming by hearing and hearing by the, that means there is one that comes to your physical ear. Then you process it, but the, your spirit now catches it. It's when your spirit lambanos it, that's when it becomes your own. It's for your taking, but listen, some prophecies there is no name on it. When your life becomes a a a, a when your life has the tools required to host that kind of prophecy, it will now come to you. The Bible didn't say Judas will betray first. It was when Judas the director. in job? Judas now went to do business as well. Some prophecies are angry. There's no name on it. If your life can host that prophecy, it becomes you. There are nations hanging, flags, but will you will, will you become it? What have you not wasted your life on the altar of defilement? Compromise. It doesn't even just have to be sexual immorality only. Compromise of all sorts. You are cutting corners. When God said, let's do it this way, you are going another way. Can you follow the plan and the purpose and the pattern of God for your life? You will not get there by us. Ministry is not side also. Praise the Lord. Let's celebrate the woman of God. Let's celebrate her. Please welcome her. Practical consecration. So consecration is not some church thing you do. It's who you are. You have been separated. You are unto God. It means you, you can respond to the will of God. Before you could know the will of God, but you could not respond. Now you can respond. Pray he hears him. Praise the Lord. Number three, quickly. Ah, prayer and partnership. No priest that doesn't pray. Second Corinthians chapter six verse one. Do you even know that you are you are a worker together with God? 
Do you know what it means to be working together with him? It means where you go in his will, he is there. God, I'm looking for you. I can't even see you. Even when I don't feel you. Listen, I don't need to feel God. I know him. Praise the Lord. If you use body spray, do you need to feel? Me until feel like, if it's the original one, you know it follows you. <laughs> Praise God. And this time shall follow them that believe. You know if you are the authentic believer, it follows you. Praise God. That's how it works. <laughs> We are workers together. Have you opened your scripture there? Can we read it together now? One, two, read. We then are workers together. Royal priesthood. We work together. We work in partnership. Now, not partnership as age mates or level mates or course mates. Uh uh, uh uh. He is superior. Is that true? Because the Holy Spirit is the governor of the Christian life. We work humbly in partnership. Do you see that? It's in partnership. When you see demons and the works of the enemy, you can harass them, but you can't harass the Holy Ghost. And you cannot intimidate him with your tongues. He gave you, unless he's not the one he gave you. Praise God. We work together. And that's the goal of prayer. Prayer is not just boasting. Do you know we pray 14 hours in tongues? You, how many hours have you prayed? Two hours. Ah, you are a babe. You are a babe. We walk in the realm of the immortals. Don't worry. If it does not translate into solving problems in your generation, you are you are those immortals. When we get to heaven, you will call you like this and line your prayer. Praise the Lord. So when Paul was praying in Ephesians 1, that the eyes of my understanding, being enlightened, prayer was for revelation and then expression. So when you pray and the will of God is revealed to you. Prayer again energizes you to pursue it. Do you know there are some things in purpose you will never pursue until you have prayed sufficiently? You want to do it. How many of you did morning cry while in the university? Morning cry. That's morning preaching. In school then, I had hostels that were my crusade grounds. I like hostels that used to have a compound. You know those fenced hostels? Like Harvard Wood. Do you know Harvard Wood? Do you know Remus? You know those hostels, Abby, that have options. Those hostels. Okay, you don't know. Which one do you know? So, when we get there, you know what I do in the morning? I take some of my disciples along. But when I first started on my own, I'll say, good! Then I'll, I'll say, let me wait, let me wait. Um, after two minutes. Then one useless chicken will do, cool, cool, I say, hey, get to me, go, will Then I'll wait again. After two minutes again, good! Then after I say, shakara, shakara. Then I'll say, good morning. Once I don't say, good morning, my fellow people in this hostel. Uh-huh. Then it begins to flow. And I found out that most times, beginning a thing is often the most difficult step. And listen, if you are not powered in prayer, you don't know what you will face. You think purpose is that people will be clapping for you. You think clapping is what? Listen, even if they are clapping for you, you think it, it, it enters your mind. <laughs> will clapping put money in your account like that? No. <laughs> you are talking of something beyond. You've seen the will of God. You know that in your own self, you don't have the capacity to fulfill it. But yet, you know that you are one with him. And so, as you pray, you are praying to be more conscious of his presence and his power. Do you see that? You are not praying so that it will come down from heaven. Unless you are talking about second coming. Praise the Lord. He's not going to come down from heaven and say, Ah, me. No. But he will use his word to strengthen you. Some of you, there are some scriptures that when we open, you say, Ah, this one. God told me this thing. And it becomes like your, your own arsenal in the day of battle. Because when the life challenges come, they don't come with timetable. There's no prior notification. They don't come like alarm. They just eat. But if there is no word to sustain you, that means that your enterprise of prayer was futile. You didn't really pray. So you would spend a lot of time in prayer, but they were not praying. They were complaining. They were murmuring. They were grumbling. They were not praying. There's a point you get to in prayer where even your body responds. You were first saying, Lord, I don't know. After a while, you were singing some dumb when song. Lord, we know you are the one that can do it. After a while, something does change. As if a light is turned on in your spirit. And then you just begin to believe that uh, uh, we are more than conquerors. Through him who loved us. She be I love God and he loves me. He's the one that sent me on this assignment. He can't leave me in the midst of the battle. Even when I don't feel him, he's still the fourth man in the fire. And then you walk. Why? Partnership in prayer. 
you settle things on your knees. Wesley L. Dwell wrote a book many years ago, A Blaze for God. Meltal wrote like a mighty wind. When you read these books, you see what prayer can do. E.M. Bound, the power of prayer, the weapon of prayer. Prayer and praying men. You see what prayer can do. Listen, prayer still works. Forget suit. <laughs> Amen. Brought he just he wife a fine suit. It's not about suit. Oh. All these men that are making impact, I mean by biblical impact, not noise, impact. They are men of prayer. I've never met any man who is a true man of prayer who is not doing something strong in his generation, whether he's known or unknown. Because some of us we will not be in the forefront, some of us will be in quiet places, but our impact will be indelible. My grandmother is 111 now and she used to sweep the floor of the church near our house. It's just recently they said, don't, don't sweep the floor again because now it was obvious that she's now too old. But even yet, her heart still yearns to... For her, that's her own assignment. Then when women that are pregnant, eh, you know, waiting for delivery, you know all those fears, she would tell her, it's not... Uh, uh. When I had... She had 13 children. When I had... It was like that. In a way, she was passing a message. She's old, but she's still strong. Listen, that's why I told you. In prayer, God may not give you the name of your ministry, but you will find your ministry. Yes, sir. It's a ministry. Not uh, uh, FZBA prayer ministry. FZBA prayer ministry. I believe you get. But I'm saying, he doesn't even need to have a name before he makes a name for God. Praise the Lord. Prayer is partnership. So when next you are praying, don't just think, I'm hoping. Mm -mm. You are partnering with him. That's how we are workers together with him. When I'm in any meeting, I just told you about the testimonies in the office. We are not praying, joking prayers there. Oh God, we hope we will make sales. Or... That's not what we are praying. We are downloading God's will. And then, ah, let's go to this school. Let's invade this school. And then we go and we have 200% result. Aha! Because Jesus is not only relevant in church premises. He's relevant everywhere. Because his name answers everywhere. When I say, say Jesus, you say it in church premises. Even in offices, when it gets to a point, they say, let's, let's say it first. Your boss that is a Muslim comes and says, sorry, this thing you are even saying now. Alpha, tell me what exactly. Is it because some pastors are lying? Yes. Oh yeah, we will now show you that actually. Say, eh, okay, it's just because I trust you. Eh, why? Your light so shines before men. They see your good works, not good talks. Not Greek and Hebrew boastings in the flesh. <laughs> they see your good works and then by your good works, the impact and the transformation on lives, they glorify your father. Elijah said, before God whom I stand, let's go to Mount Carmel. 450 prophets of Baal, 400 prophets of Asherah, all of them, the power of God came down. And the Bible made us to understand that when Elijah was done, the people began to shout, the Lord, he is God. You know what that meant? El Elijah. Elijah. They were actually calling Elijah's name. Because Elijah means El is God. Praise the Lord. What will your prayer do as a priest? It must bring changes. Practical changes. Hallelujah. I'll wrap up because our woman of God is here. Matthew 6, 5 to 13. I won't be able to exegete on that. But just write it down. Matthew 6, 5 to 13. Remember, Jesus was teaching his disciples how to pray. He didn't say if you pray. He said when you pray. Pray saying, our Father. I like the fact that he began with our Father. Because Old Testament priests too, they were not relating with God as Father. They were relating with him as the Holy One of Israel. But in the New Testament, the case is different. Is that true? Although he's the Holy One of Israel, he has also made us partakers of his holiness. And then he's our Father. You know what that means? They are on the altar. You can say to your pastor but you can say it to God. I pray that as you pursue purpose, may you not be alone. People will blackmail you. They will reject you. They will betray you. They will stab you. But if you, if you know him, the one that dwells in the midst of the cherubim and lives on your inner and you can, you can draw from that inner strength, you will, you will move. You will move. You will move. Our Father who art in heaven, although you are never, you live on our inside, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. That's prayer. Prayer is not just about some selfish goals. There are times you ask for what you need. Yes. But it's kingdom. It's kingdom. Kingdom prayers are the most powerful of prayers. Because you are interceding. You are joining Jesus. 
goes in their intercessory ministry to bring down the will of God. Thy kingdom come. In my workplace, thy kingdom come. In my department, if you leave your department as an undergraduate and nobody's saved, nobody's life is changed, nobody knows Jesus, you just came quietly and left quietly. You didn't do kingdom. Somebody's life must be affected because you became an intercessor in your department. When we're in school, a young man began to claim that he is the pastor of our class. And then he would go to mountain and snap pictures and, and post on our WhatsApp group in class and say, I'm praying for all of you. Send your prayer points. So, and people call me pastor, even though I was, I was like this, I was short at them. People call me pastor. And I don't go around, I don't do all those things. But they just call me pastor. Because I was an evangelist. I preached in 4 in 1. Do you know 4 in 1? I will stand there, I will preach. When the lecturer is coming, then I will go and see them. That was how we do. Because when you're looking for Mike, I used to preach under trees. Once you can give me your ears, we'll preach to you. God is good. God is good. God is good. Hallowed be your name. John 17, 17. Prayer is partnership. So when I pray in tongues, I'm not praying to uh, make you feel high. No, no, no. I'm praying. I'm partnering with him. John 17, 17. Can somebody please read? What did he read? What, what does he say? John 17, 17. Somebody. Aha. By for so what happens is that as you are praying and you are, no, I told you, you don't only pray in tongues, you pray scripture. What happens is that there is a work of the Holy Spirit called the sanctifying ministry of the Spirit and the Word. He's, listen, it doesn't only separate you from sin. It separates you to purpose. <laughs> Praise God. You can't be everywhere. You are not called to be everywhere. The grace of God on your life is not for everywhere and anyhow, anything. Nah, ah. Sanctification is that you don't compromise purpose just because something is nice. You stay on your lane until you accomplish that which is the will of God. James chapter 1 verse 5. If any man lack wisdom, let him ask. How can you be praying and you are becoming more foolish? It's not prayer. It's not prayer. No. You should be wiser. A brother to- said to me, I'm about to wrap up now so that I'll pray. A brother said to me one time, he, he wanted to maybe open a book club or something. I said, which book club are you opening? Give me time to pray. And then we ask the Lord and the Spirit of God. It's not just book club we are talking about. You can have a book stop. Sometimes you see what you think you are hearing is not all there is. You need to ask God for wisdom because it's always bigger. But it gives you as a seed. Do you see that? It's bigger than what you are seeing. Now you are now... <laughs> God is helping him now. He won't forget the prophet. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm kidding you. Know, I don't ask people for money. Praise the Lord. Ephesians chapter. Let's do Ephesians 2. So that we can. Ephesians 5 And do not be drunk with wine wherein is excess But be what Be being filled with the spirit That's priesthood Allowing the influence of the spirit to govern your lifestyle Is priesthood Not standing in one corner No, no, no no. The influence of the spirit governs your lifestyle Priesthood Be filled with the spirit Speaking to one another (laughs) In sounds And hymns And spiritual songs Singing and making melody, not in mic now, but in your heart. Do you see that? Unto the Lord. What happens? Giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of Christian. Making melody in your heart. That was how those those 14 books I told you about were born. How? making melody, spending time with him because priesthood is for intimacy and downloading when a husband and a wife meet themselves, there is intimacy, true but there is a downloading the downloading, and then you see a baby 
maybe after nine months or 20 months. But you must see a baby after a while. Your in- intimacy with God must bet something on the earth. But it must begin first from the realm of the spirit. On the earth that lasts, except it begins from the Because the things that are seen are temporal. But the things that are unseen, they are eternal realities. Is somebody blessed? Please let's pray. Let's pray. You are going to tell it to the Lord as I drop the mic. Father, I receive grace this season to be a doer of your will that has been revealed to me. The Spirit of God is speaking to me. There are people who have discovered what God wants to do with their lives. But they are not obedience. The courage is not there. The courage to press is not there. The distractions of this falling system is, is, is talking you. You don't know that Babylon works by a kind of system. Babylon draws you away from the will of God. Babylon wants you to compromise the will of God to get what looks like the will of God, but it is not the will of God. But hear the voice of God today. You can stay with God and fulfill your destiny. You can stay with God and fulfill purpose. You don't need to be defiled. You don't need to walk away from Calvary. You don't need to walk away from the Holy Spirit. You can fulfill prophetic destiny. We receive grace. Oh, thank you. Oh, let this be the meeting that God will open your eyes. Agabash Netomasofalaska Baratwa. Brega de Gevet. Be rightly positioned by the Spirit and the Word. And you will fulfill the will and the intent of God for your life. Somebody may need to repent. Lord, I am going the way of selfish ambition. I'm not following that which your Spirit is prompting me to do. Can you go before Him? Talk to Him. He's your Father, your Maker, your friend. That's why you are here to be aligned. Courage imparted to those in the right direction. Wisdom for those who are. That everyone comes into alignment. The eyes of your understanding. The menorah. The lights from his presence. Burst forth upon your soul. Oh Jesus. Somebody's pray. Somebody's pray. Somebody's pray. Let incense rise. Let incense rise. Arato bella susa balata. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Can you pray in tongues for two minutes, please? Zekitaba. Zekitaba katosita. This is that meeting where something must shift in your life. Father, Okay, you'll be around this evening. But I hear the Lord speaking to me. The Spirit of the Lord is talking to you. As I was preaching, I saw the Spirit of God piercing your heart. And the Spirit of the Lord began to tell you that it's time to walk in clarity. I don't know what is foggy around you, but the Lord is speaking clarity. And the Lord said we should declare clarity, 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 clarity. You will not waste your life. You will not waste your existence. Decisions that will make you compromise totally on the will of God. No, you will walk in the way of God. The ministry will be born. Consecration will be intact. Grace is released upon you. Oh Jesus. The Lord says there is help. I don't know. There's someone here. The Lord says there is help for you. There is help for you. There is help for you. There is hope for that tree that is cut down. At the scent of water, it will rise. It will rise. 
thrive. It will thrive. It will thrive in the midst of adversity. You stand strong in the will of God. There is so much grace. Oh, praise God. Praise God. Praise God.